AI will happen. Yeah. It's absolutely no stopping it. And you saw that last year. It's now forgotten, but there was an initiative called the Open Letter, where you know we we wanted all CEOs of AI companies to halt for six months yeah. until we solve the control problem. Nobody signed up on this because of a prisoner's dilemma, basically that nobody could afford to stop because their competitors wouldn't stop. Yeah. Right. So AI will happen. Uh, with the way resources are, are being poured on artificial intelligence, it will become smarter than us. Mm. Forget my prediction if it's in two years or seven years or 20 years. You know, if I tell you that a train is going to go out of, you know, off track and kill all of its passengers, mm. you don't ask me when. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's not the most important question. But is it even a problem that it's going to be smarter than us? They're already smarter than 100 us, right? 100%, right? And then the problem is there will be a few issues. And mm. this is, you know, going back to your, uh, your question of, is it going to be a utopia or a dystopia? I believe we're going to get a lot of challenges before we get to the utopia. At the end of the book, in the smart bit, I speak about what I call the fourth inevitable. Mm. And the fourth inevitable is it, it, it takes you a, a, a bit of time to actually recognize it, that the smarter you become, the more pro-life you become. If you're not very intelligent, OK, you're the one destroying the planet uh, with all of your emissions without even knowing what you're doing, mm. right? If you have a bit of intelligence, okay, you say, I'm destroying the planet, I know what I'm doing, but it's not my problem. Yep. If you have more intelligence, you stop you destroying the planet and you say, I'm going to take my responsibility. Mm -hmm. And if you're the most superior in intelligence, you say, can I do something to fix it, mm -hmm. right? Why? Because the less restrained on the resource in called intelligence you are, mm -hmm. the less... Uh, confined you become into a life of scarcity. Life actually is not a life of scarcity. We have infinite resources on this planet. Mm. We're just not using them wisely. Give us a bit more intelligence mm. and you create a world of abundance mm. where you don't really need to compete with stupidity. Now, the, 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 the idea is we're going to end up there. We're going to end up at a point where AI will make everything so simple mm. Mm, that you don't really need to compete to get ahead. Mm. Everything's available, and we're so, so, sort of almost completely equalized, if you want. But that's the fourth inevitable. That's not before we suffer a lot of pain. Yeah, okay? because you said it, in the long term, there will be good, but in the short term, there in will the be immediate, bad. In the immediate short term, yeah. I think there are several challenges. The easiest one for everyone to imagine is what I call the end of truth, right? The end of truth is, you know, you, uh, many people have seen what Sora does uh, from ChatGPT, uh, you know, Genie and so on. Uh, so, so basically now you're starting to get, uh, you know, ChatGPT saying, I can give you a video engine that you can't distinguish from reality. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, others, uh, by the way, there are many others that are creating deep fakes that are indistinguishable mm -hmm. distinguishable from reality. Uh, Google is even saying, I can build video games where you can interact with those realities in ways. Yeah, these are, you know, the DOS layer of, of, of what you can achieve. But very, very quickly, uh, each and every one of us can create a deep fake mm -hmm. at almost no cost at all, right? When, when that is our, uh, the environment in which we operate, uh, you are going to disrupt the perception of the truth. It's becoming very, very difficult to know what the truth is. Mm -hmm. That's very dystopian in my mind. Uh, you know, human relationships are going to become quite unusual uh, in terms of, um, you know, for, first of all, imagine what the impact of that deep fake is going to be on our perception of beauty, for example, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, how in the last 10 years or five years, a, 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 a normal human being had to compete with face filters. Uh, now a normal human being is going to com compete with deep fake that can create things that are not human anymore, mm. that can actually chat with you in ways that are not human anymore, that can behave and influence you in ways that they've been trained for years to manipulate humans into clicking and swiping and mm. so on. And, and so they, they can create environments where your relationship with a typical human becomes a little too taxing if you think about it, okay? Uh, the epidemic of loneliness would grow massively as a result of that. The definition of dating might become very, very, uh, you know, different than what it used to be. Mm -hmm. And I think there is a very high risk there.